so this is gonna be the third video in my TTC journey recap. I didn't film anything. I was looking through my journal that I was keeping. I didn't write anything in the two week wait at all. So I figured I would just like kind of go over like what I was feeling and what that kind of looked like. If you're not sure what the two week wait is when you are TTC or trying to conceive, there is two weeks between the time you ovulate to the time you can either take a test or you get your period. So that two weeks, as you can imagine, is very nerve wracking. And that's normally like the hardest part of the month for me, for me to get through. That's where I have like the most anxiety and stuff. Um, also a very hard part of the month is getting a negative test, obviously, or starting my period that is more like hard emotionally um because of, like the disappointment and all that stuff the two week wait is like a different kind of difficult because there's so much unknown and there's so much that's like riding on those two weeks so you're like okay like is it gonna happen this month like Am I possibly like in the process of like getting pregnant because it's a whole big process. There's a lot either happening in your body or it's not. And there's no way to know <laughs> and it's very nerve wracking. So during normal, normal two week waits for me, they were very, sorry, I don't like this thing up in my face. They were very nerve wracking. It was filled with uh, so much anxiety. And then trying not to be anxious because I didn't want to stress myself out more and then like make my body not respond well to trying to get pregnant and not like implanting or any of that stuff. Also, there's going to be a lot of information in this video. So if you're not comfortable hearing about that, you probably shouldn't be watching TTC videos because they're very informative. So there's that. But yeah I think not that I had given up at all because I was like tracking everything to a T which we've already seen in the last video and I was like taking so much stuff like health wise that I will do in a separate video because there's so much that I did but I hadn't like gotten to the point where I had like given up and that's what I heard a lot of people's advice be like well either just don't think about it or just have fun with it or it happened once we gave up and I'm like that's not super encouraging and as someone who has a very like I would say obsessive personality I can't just give up on something that I want and that I'm trying to accomplish so that's not possible for me <laughs> so I'm like I don't know how to get to that point and mentally I didn't know like I can't just stop thinking about it I can't just like give up but I can't mentally and physically not worry about it so if you're looking for someone from the perspective of someone who didn't necessarily give up and stop trying you came to the right place because I did not at all if you're someone with anxiety you can't get to that point easily so I had never like gotten there but I did start to like lose hope if that makes sense not giving up but starting to think this isn't gonna happen and because you see people like getting pregnant so easily and I feel like you're always taught like that you have to be super careful because you know one time you could get pregnant which is also it's true but I think in my mind I thought it was way easier to get pregnant than it actually was for for us anyway so I thought it was just going to be like super easy like okay cool like we want to have a baby this is great we can go ahead and get that going first of 
the year and then <laughs> as the year went on I'm just like wait why isn't this happening so I think a lot of it had to do with whatever I had going on I think I have endometriosis it hasn't been confirmed because you can only confirm it with like surgery so not doing that but yeah I have like all the symptoms not while well, being pregnant now but I did have all the symptoms and all that stuff but I'm getting off track I'll get to that more in my other video so during those two weeks I had kind of like already decided like I wasn't gonna be pregnant because I haven't been so why would I be this month still having anxiety about it and lots of like going back and forth in my mind so it wasn't just like oh well it's not gonna happen and then it did it wasn't like that at all so much was going on in my mind like the normal like anxiety stuff but there was like less because it had been like eight months like off and on so I was getting to the point where I didn't think it was gonna happen on its own we were getting closer to a year than not and that's when people normally start looking for help so I was getting to the point where I'm like it's not gonna happen so not even not necessarily why I even try but just in my mind like okay whatever now we'll see but it's not gonna happen and especially August I was not expect out of all of the months that we tried that was the month that I was least expecting something to happen because I mean I don't know if it was just a busy month or what but there wasn't many opportunities to try if you get what I'm saying so it wasn't like the month that we like tried the most I don't I don't think that had it that much to do with it because if anything see I don't even want to say that I giving up because I was still thinking about it I still had anxiety about it but I think getting to the point where I didn't think it was gonna happen didn't help me at all because that just made me sad <laughs> and that just made me feel like depressed so I don't it wasn't like a giving up in like a release kind of way it was a I'm getting upset and disappointed because I don't think this is gonna happen on its own and that had a lot of weight to it so I don't think that had anything to do with us getting pregnant that month at all <laughs> so if people just tell you to give up and stop thinking about it and get to the point where you just give up I don't think that's always accurate and I don't think that's always a good thing to tell people because for me giving up put me not even giving up because yeah but getting to that point put me in a worse place mentally than all of the anxiety and trying to make it happen if that makes sense it's really hard to explain but during that two-week wait I still thought about it I just thought about it in the sense of like Dang. but I feel like the month's been so crazy like it's not gonna happen this month why would it so <clears throat> that's what was kind of going on in my head it wasn't a great situation but honestly after the first few months like it wasn't super easy anyway mentally so that's the I feel like that's the side of like TTC that people don't really talk about a lot is how difficult it is on the months that it doesn't happen it's not easy <laughs> at all it's a lot of emotions to deal with because at the start of the month it's exciting because it's the start of a new cycle and that's exciting and then during ovulation time it gets a little bit stressful because there's only a certain time frame you can get stuff done <laughs> and then after that anxiety sets in and all the thoughts set in <laughs> because at that point you can't do anything else it just has to either happen or not and that's like 
so much to deal with emotionally. And then the end of the cycle comes and either you get pregnant, you get a negative test, or your period starts. And any of those have so many emotions with it. I cannot tell you all of the times that I would just like cry so much from a negative test or from starting my period. It literally is like so, so hard <laughs> to deal with when that's the last thing you want. So if you're going through something like that, I don't care who you are. I am here for you and I hope that it gets better and I hope that it happens soon for you. And if we had needed help, it's not like the end of the world, obviously. I mean, even when you get treatment and stuff, it's not like a guarantee. So that has its own set of stuff. And I'm, I don't, I don't know what that's like. I just know like what my experience was like. And I think anytime you're going through TTC and it's taking like longer than expected or longer than what seems like normal, it gets very stressful and it gets very nerve wracking very quickly. So each month that passes, it's just like, why is this not happening? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with us? Like what's going on? Like there's so, so much that goes through your mind, mine anyway, I don't know. I hope all of that makes sense. That's why like towards the end of the two week wait and I started taking tests, I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> I feel like I'm just wasting tests, honestly. And for a while I was. I guess I'll show you again all of my tests that I took. So if you're TTC and it's triggering for you to see positive tests, you could just cut off the video here. Know that I'm here for you to support you and I hope the best for you. And I know it's so hard. I think no matter how long you've been trying, it's difficult for everyone and everyone is so different. So try not to compare yourself to people who have been trying for longer and think that your feelings are not valid because they definitely are. Regardless of if you've been trying for a month, two months, like if you've gone through that disappointment, like that's still valid. It still hurts to see a negative test. It still hurts for it not to happen. So if you're going through that, know that you're still valid, regardless of what anyone has said, or how you think about yourself in your own mind, that it's okay to be disappointed. It's normal to be disappointed and it's okay to be upset about it. And I think it's, it's good to, not that it's good to be upset about it, but it's good to like acknowledge your feelings and know why you're feeling that way and let yourself feel that so you can move on best advice I have for when you're dealing with disappointment is let yourself be disappointed and it's okay if it takes a while to get out of that I think that's pretty normal I'm gonna go through my tests that I took to show you so if that's something that you don't want to see I understand because I used to not want to see people's positive tests too here are here's the first test that I took Obviously, there's absolutely nothing on it. Next test. Again, absolutely nothing. And it has the dates next to it over here. I don't know if you can see them. So I started taking tests at <laughs> literally 5 DPO, which is days past ovulation. Obviously didn't get anything. I got the slightest line at 11 days past ovulation. That's where I got my first positive you probably can't even see it because it's literally so faint but then it started getting like more and more obviously it's hard to see because it's on camera and it's literally the faintest line I thought it was like a broken test because I'm like there's no way there's an actual a line on here that is the two-week wait all summed up if you know someone who is in the process of TTC maybe check up on them just let them know that you're here for them I think that would probably be nice to hear. Next video will be everything that I did different that month, supplement wise. So I will talk to you guys in that video. Bye.